Hello. Hello, Kathleen. Yes. Hi, this is Roy. I'm outside, so let me go. Oh, okay. Um, they're doing yard work next door. Okay, go ahead. Hi, um, I'm calling from the post office. My name is Roy. Yes. And uh, the new ma- our mailman. I don't know if you know this, but he's very OCD. Uh no. Oh yeah, and um, he's been complaining about your mailbox because it is not perfectly level. Do you think you can have someone rehang your mailbox so that it's not leaning? Um, you know, I will, but I mean that's that has nothing to do with me. It's um, the um. Uh, the um, spit it out. Remington Woods. Uh, so you know the they own they they installed them. So I mean I will bring it to their attention. Well, you could just go over but, there and fix it without telling them. You know I don't see where my mailbox is leaning. It's it's there, it's just a slightly off. He measured it. He brought a, a one of those carpenters levels and, and made sure. And he says it's 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 uh, just a. A little bit off. The bubble's just a little bit to the left. Oh, my God. You know. I mean, I have a woman. What? I have a woman uh, a that woman. delivers my mail. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, I know she looks like a woman, but she's actually a man. She, she's one of those oh. tra- transgenders. Okay, all right. You know, to each his own. But, um, you know, because though. Our original male lady, which I assumed was a lady, was going. On you know what? You know what? Male, male lady, in. male lady. That is that is so appropriate in this case because it's a transgender. Uh huh. I just needed to point that out. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, we had, which I, you know, was a male lady to begin with, and then Ba-dum-tsh. she said well, she was going on vacation, and that someone else was taking her position. So therefore, um, Whoa, wait. that's who I assumed oh. was. Oh, is it April? Um, you know, I don't know what her name is. Okay. I, I, don't. <laughs> I just remember but from okay, la- last we week's will, show, um, April was retiring. Okay. Well, okay. Well, good luck to her. And, Slash uh, we him. And shall um, take care of the mailbox. All right. Yeah. Fix that up. Do it by tonight. All righty. Hurry up. Mm-hmm. Just, just Bye-bye. Hurry the fuck up with that. Yeah. All right. Snowplow show. All right. Bye. Bye. Snowplow show. Snowplow show. Snowplow show. Okay, bitch. Snowplow show. Roy. What? Roy. Okay, fucking dog. Steve Dave. Fucking dog. Oh, fuck you, lady. Turnwinder? <laughs> okay. Bo, 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 sha, bo, 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 what the hell are you? Steve Dave. No, 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 no. I, you're not making a lot of sense. Sense, sense, sense. My wiener. What the fuck is that? You don't say that word. You are some kind of asshole. Yeah. Bob Dabalina. <laughs> Bob Dabalina. Like this bitch asshole and don't fuck you. Fuck you, bitch. No, 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 no. Fuck you, bitch. Have you ever been fucked in the ass? How dare you talk to this dog like that? Heard of Fucked her? in the ass. Meum. Goodbye. Dabalina. Meum. Meum. Goodbye. Dabalina. This is Sensei Doug. What? Sensei fucking Doug. Who's the good boy? Who's the good boy? Who's the good boy, Westy? Is it you? Are you the good boy, Westy? Roy. Steve Dave. Bob Bob Dabalina. Go suck a dick. Roy. Steve Dave. Bob Bob Dabalina. Go suck a dick. <laughs> Listen, Westy, you little shit. Turn <laughs> winder? Okay. I think you're full of shit. I think you're full of shit. Cactus, 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 motherfucker. Hey, everybody, you're listening to the Snowplow Show for Thursday, July 13th, 2017. This is the 381st episode of the Snowplow Show. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've started putting the episode number instead of the date, since the date is kind of there anyway, you know, like in whatever I post it in. It's a little bit redundant, so I've started doing episode numbers, so everyone can see how many episodes I've done and, and exactly how much I've wasted my life. It's a great new system I've come up with here. I've actually got a news story today for you guys. It's been a while since I've had one of those. 
Rev sent this one to me. This is a brand new story that is on thesmokinggun.com. A man was busted for phoning in a bomb threat to the police, which is dumb enough, but he used the payphone in the police station lobby to make the bomb threat. An Oklahoma man is facing a felony charge after allegedly phoning in a bomb threat to the Muskogee Police Department from a payphone in the station's lobby. According to the cops, Michael Myers, 22 years old, called 911 at 3.30 a.m. to report that he had placed a bomb at the police station. Myers also stated he was a terrorist and wanted to turn himself in. Investigators quickly determined Determined that the call was coming from inside the precinct house and the precinct house that's okay whatever and they collared Myers who is seen above there's his you know mugshot thing Myers is being held in the county jail for making a telephone bomb threat he was also convicted in 2013 on two felony burglary charges so that's kind of funny he made a bomb threat from within the police station I mean I, I guess if he wanted to get caught and arrested then mission accomplished Oh, and I just now, I caught the reference to that the call is coming from inside the precinct house. Get it? The call is coming from inside the house. Except when you write precinct house, it sounds kind of stupid. And what's that even a reference to? Like some old TV show or movie or something? One of you listeners should let me know what that's from. You, you know, that's something you always hear. The call is coming from inside the house. Thanks, Rev, for sending me this story. I will put a link to it in the show notes. In other news, the new episode of Calls of Mass Confusion is out. I just noticed that it was posted in the Discord. It was released today. It's called Cactus Fighting Association, and I don't know what calls are in it. I haven't listened to it yet. I'll probably listen to it tonight. But I will put a link to it in the show notes if anyone wants to hear it. Or you can just go to youtube.com slash Jesus in a Dump Truck. Calls of Mass Confusion is, of course, the show where Giad and his film crew go around filming the people that we call. And it includes calls by me and Carlito and Jin, Laugh Track Matt, Dwight, and and other people who I, I don't I don't know, probably other people, I think, right? Maybe not. I forget. But yeah, calls of mass confusion. Go watch the latest episode. I'm sure it's amazing. Before we get started with the show today, I need to update everyone with important coin related news. The first coin related news I have is that the PLA coin, the 2017 PLA coin, it is almost gone completely. There's currently just less than 50 of them left, I think maybe less than 30, because a bunch of people bought them yesterday when I announced on Twitter that they're almost gone. So if you want a PLA coin, you better hurry the hell up and get one, because they're not going to be around much longer. And I really want to make some more coins, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to afford it anytime soon. But I will definitely try my best to make more 2017 coins before the year is over, but maybe I'll just wait and do the 2018 coins. And also, I kind of want to make a snowplow show coin instead of another 2017 coin. You know, just something more specific to the snowplow show instead of the Phone Losers of America. So hopefully that will happen soon, but if not, I will do the 2018 coins as early in the year as possible next year. And they might be the same design, we'll just change it to 2018. I don't know what we're going to do yet. We'll see what kind of designs are submitted to us next year. Hopefully Don Fickles makes us another one again. If you want to order a PLA coin, though, the URL to go to is foamlosers.org slash coins. They're 10 bucks each, and they're very shiny, and everyone should have one. So why don't you have a PLA coin? What the hell? And uh, speaking of coin stuff, I'm going to go to the Kickstarter page right now for the Clown Set coin. I'm sure most of you know already, because I won't shut up about it, but there's going to be a Clown Set coin. It's the same size as the PLA coin, and it was designed by the same guy, Don Fickles. And it looks like his Kickstarter is now up to $825, so he's met his goal. We are definitely going to get Clown Set coins. But if you want to be one of the very first people to get a Clown Set coin, then you should definitely join this Kickstarter. I pledged 20 bucks for mine, but you can pledge like $10 and just get one. I did 20 because I wanted a couple of them, and he also gives you a bunch of stickers with your coins. It's a much better deal than the PLA coins. The PLA coins are kind of a ripoff when you think about it. So, yay, coins. Everyone get coins. Go look in the show notes for the link to the coins, because everyone needs a coin. Uh, operator, I'd like to make a collect call, please. First name, Bob. Last name is... We out of baby pizza boy. Hello? Collect call for Mr. Bob. We out of baby pizza boy. Sorry, wrong number. Who's that, dear? Bob. They had a baby. It's a boy. Oh. Don't cheat the phone company. Save money the legal way. Call Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. For today's show, I have a submission here by... Bob Murphy. Bob Murphy he says, hey, I was listening to the June 12th episode and one of the voicemail messages mentioned ham radio operators. 
Here is a list of people that's in a ham radio club. It includes home, cell, and work numbers with addresses. Looking at the Facebook page, it looks like it's a club full of people in their 60s. And he sends me a bunch of ideas. He says, I sent you those vinyl stickers a year ago, and you sent me some swag back. Thanks for the stickers, the newsletter, the PLA con badge. I'd prefer to just remain anonymous if you mention me on the podcast. Oh, shit, I've already said his name. I'm going to have to bleep that out. Or, no, I'm going to change the name to Bob Murphy. Wherever I said his name before, I'm going to change that to Bob Murphy. So if you're confused about why that happened, now you know. This is a list of 17 people, though, and it looks like they all have cell phone numbers, and about half of them have home phone numbers. So let's give these a try. You got a hold of us. Leave your name and number. We'll call you back. Did I? Bye. Kind of seems like... I did the exact opposite. I didn't get a hold of him. Hello? Hello, Mr. Clifford? Yes. Hi there, uh, this is Mr. Dabalina from the Comptroller's office here in... Yeah. And, yeah. hey, um, we've just had a few complaints uh, from people here here in the city that um, your ham radio, um, your transmissions are coming up in their fillings in their teeth. Like, are you using, you're not using illegal amplifiers or anything, are you? No. Oh. No, I, I, I almost never transmit any ham radio, anything. Yeah, but when you do, like occasionally, and, and you say your call sign, like people people around the city have been writing down your call sign whenever you say it, because they don't know what it means, and we, we finally figured out it was just, you know, you with your high-powered radios, just trans, yeah, no, transmitting with too much power. Nothing illegal, nothing yeah, the only time I ever, ever, almost ever talked on the ham radio was on a uh, either a Sunday evening or a Monday evening net. I see. Yeah, it looks like that's and when it, most of the it's on, it's on FM on uh, VHF. I don't even have an HF transmitter set up. Oh yeah, I don't know a whole lot about all that stuff. I just know that we're getting a lot of people saying that your call sign is coming through their teeth, and and yeah. it's um, they, bullshit. They, <laughs> Oh, It'll no. work that way. Well, no, I, I don't think a bunch of people all over town would lie about it. it like, Yeah, it's, get me names. I'll talk to them. Oh, we have all the names right here. We can't give them to you, someone like you, you know. But we, we definitely mm-hmm. have. I'm just letting you know about yeah, the complaint. Yeah, the FCC. Ma- you know? maybe, you could just, maybe you could shorten your antenna or something. <laughs> Re- replace it with a coat hanger. Or I don't know. Just do something that makes it not broadcast to people's heads. Because that's messed up. Yeah. You're going to have to get specifics. Oh, that's pretty specific, isn't it? I mean, it's broadcasting to people's teeth. Your call sign. I need, you know. How much more specific can it be, really? Yeah, that doesn't happen. Oh, it it definitely happens. I I don't think all these people, like over a dozen people all over, I don't think they're all getting together to tell lies. Why would they do that? Uh says here on the, on the reports uh, that the transmissions are coming through their metal caps slash fillings, and it's causing pain in their testicles. And you just need to cut it out. Like, like you're not in any trouble. We're That's being nice I'll about it. it. How, how's that? You, you better cut it out, motherfucker. Like, people shouldn't have to put up with this. Yeah. It's bad for tourism. Hey, also, you need to stop broadcasting that pirate radio station. Over the ham radio, yeah. that's not how what did, they're. How did you get? How did you get this number? It, that's not what they're for. Okay, so in, in addition to lower. How did your, you get this phone number? Uh, it's it's in our records. Like anyone that has a call sign has to register their phone number with us. Dur. With you. Yeah, with the comptroller's office. <laughs> right. Who do you work for? I, I work for the the head comptroller here in the comptroller's office. Look, I don't know why I don't know why you're you're giving me an attitude and everything. I, I'm just asking you to cut it out with the the high powered transmissions. Yeah, I don't have high powered transmissions. Oh so yes, you do. Well, well, is somebody else transmitting with your call sign? So Tobias, he gave me some ideas. I didn't read them at the beginning of the show, but idea number one: just say that you're their neighbor or you live in the city, and whenever they're transmitting, you're receiving transmissions through the metal caps slash fillings on your teeth, and it's causing pain in your testicles. And ask him to cut it out. Get really angry with them, confront them. Oh, wait, no, that's a different idea about the microwave beams. Maybe I'll do that next. 
But I kind of like this idea, the whole metal caps slash fillings idea. Does that ever really happen? Like, I, I don't, I've never really looked into it. You always hear about it happening. And, and like Pete and Pete's mom, she picked up the transmissions through the metal plate in her head. I, I know that's historically accurate, but does this really happen? Do people get transmissions through their, through their teeth? That's kind of weird. You know, back when I was a youngin, when I was like, I don't know, 12 or something, I got into a bunch of CB radio wars with a bunch of local CB radio people back when that was a thing. And this one guy, he figured out who I was and he doxed me in the 80s over a CB radio. Like every time I got on the CB and I started doing something weird and he knew it was me, he would just start yelling my name and my home address to everybody on the CB. And that was really bad because I'd pissed off a lot of people. But here's the thing, that guy, he was using illegal amplifiers on his CB radio, so he was causing his voice, yelling my name and my address all the time, to come through some old lady's telephone line, like in her house, she's just on the phone, talking on the phone, and she hears this guy going, Brad Carter, blah blah blah, Avenue. And I swear I'm not making this up, you guys, this really happened. This phone company guy showed up at our door and he talked to my dad. I didn't get to hear what they said. And at this point, I already knew who that guy was that was yelling my name. So I told my dad, I'm like, oh, you got to tell the phone company. Get him in trouble. It's going to be awesome. And he didn't do it. He didn't report the guy. He he said he just didn't want to get involved. He knew all about CB radio wars. He knew how crazy they could get. He didn't want any trouble. He told me how people used to go around clipping each other's antenna wires on the outside of their house and stuff. And they'd like flatten each other's tires. Shit was crazy before the internet. Hello? Hi, Mr. Clifford? Yes. Hey there, uh, this is Mr. Dabalina from the Comptroller's office here in f- And um, I'm not, sorry, from the where? From the Comptroller's office here in f- uh, we, okay. just de- we, we deal with uh, radio stuff mostly. Um, we understand you're a ham radio operator? I, yes. And um, hey, we've been getting reports from people around town and, and the outlying towns and stuff. That whenever whenever you sign off with your call sign, they can hear it in their fillings and their teeth, like you're using too much power or something. What's my call sign? Um, K. I haven't been using that. I haven't been in um, using my call in quite some time. I actually moved to Reno three years ago and haven't been on the the net. Um, well, so it, if someone's if, if someone's been using my call and they're they're not me. Oh, well, I don't know. Like, maybe you're just using so much power from Reno, it's affecting people in f- you know, coming through I haven't their... Been, I haven't... Let me, let, me, uh, let, me, let me elaborate a bit. And you kept yelling, been, Brad yeah. Carter, and his address, his home address, like you're harassing someone. I'm sorry? But, but it's coming out of their fillings is the main problem. I, I haven't... Except for this last field day, I haven't been on oh. um, a radio... I, I mean, I'm on once a year anymore. Um, I've been going to school, and I've been too busy to be active with the hams. Yeah, that's when the reports come in. It seems like yearly, like just a, a day or two a year, and they, they just keep coming in. This guy's call signs coming through my teeth. It's, well, I don't, it's I don't making, use my call during during field day. They they say it's it's like warming up their their testicles, like like it's just too much power or something. Are, you're not using illegal amplifiers or anything like that, are you? No, it's it's a stock system where I think we're at like fifty watts or something. Oh, yeah. But it's all sounds it's very, all sounds very futuristic. It's all, uh, we're all HF every, when we're out there, anyways. I don't, I don't. Well, that can't come so, through. Okay, when, through when, when was the last time you got a report? Uh, looks like uh, about two months ago. Two months ago. Yep. Do you remember? I don't shoot. I don't remember when field day was. I don't think it was two months ago. But I think it I was. wasn't on a, a handy talkie. Anyways, um, what the fuck's a handy talkie? Is that like some little, little kid's toy in, from Radio Shack in the sixties? Uh, no, that's a it's a handheld. Oh, okay. It's yeah, their VHF UHF handheld. I, I see. Okay, I'm new here. Okay. Um. So what what exactly do you need for me to, to cease and desist? Because I haven't been on. Um. I would like this investigated if someone's using my call. Ah, uh, no, that's a lot of work. I don't really want to do that. Just like if you are, uh, you know, broadcasting, you know, like uh, with a billion watts or whatever from Reno to, to affect <laughs> people. Up no, here. I, I don't. Honestly, I don't even have a base station or a handy talkie um, in use except for for field day, but like once a year. So can't they call it something besides handy talkie? Because that's about the gayest sounding thing I've ever heard. I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, or, that's or, just or, what I keep. Or, yeah, That's what I've, I've heard it called. That's oh, what I, yeah. I, I typically call it. Maybe you could just stop calling it that. 
So, um, where are you calling from? The comptroller's office. Okay, because you're, you're, you're relatively unprofessional. I mean, I, at first I thought this was a prank call. Oh, no, I wouldn't prank call someone. I'm a Christian. I, I just, I, like I said, I'm new here, and I've just never heard, you know, a, the walkie-talkie, or a, a talkie, what's it called? H- handy-talkie. Handy-talkie. Ugh. You, you should be ashamed just saying that out loud. Sure thing. So what do you need from me? Uh, nothing, nothing. Just just cut it out. Just just stop it. Okay. Let me know. Um, I'd like, if you could make a note, I'd like to know immediately if when the next report comes in and where from, if they can triangulate it. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll just like, when, when, the, when they call in reports, I'll just give them your phone number and I'll be just like, here, yell at this guy. He's, he's the that, one. That would be perfect. Okay. I'm going to do that then. Okay. Thank you. Hey, you know what it might be? What's that? Like we've been doubling up on, on the call signs lately. Like, uh, you know, we ran out of, out of call sign combination, letter number combinations. So we, we've just been uh, given the same one to several people. I didn't even think of that. Maybe it's one of them because they, they live I, here. I, well, okay. But for what? You've been given the, what do you mean that you've been given the same call signs to different people? We, we just ran out really? of them. You know, there's only so many, uh, what, like six-digit call sign combinations you can come up with. So we, we've, we've just been... Uh, Given out the same one to different people. I, I highly doubt that that's what's going on. Oh no, that's what we, that's how it's done now. You said you don't even use the radios anymore, so you, you don't know. So it's probably not anyone stealing your call sign. We, All right, we've just listen. If if you actually need something from me, give me a call here. But um, until there's something official going on, please. Um, oh, this is official. Make, go. It's coming through people's okay. damn teeth. I'm sorry, what? I said it's coming through people's damn teeth. Can't get any more official than that. Okay. Uh, inc- well, then uh, I, I would I would begin an investigation of triangulation for someone that's using more than 500 watts. Oh, what's triangulation mean, and what's a watt? I'm I'm new here. <clears throat> um, do you have a supervisor? Uh, I could put Ryan Jardina on the phone. But he's kind of an asshole. He's just gonna, I don't know. He's gonna, he, he'll he'll just he'll, he'll probably give you stupid bitch fees and stuff. He's 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 not very good with customers. That's why I do the phone stuff. Okay, well that's okay. I'd like to talk to him. You want to talk to Ryan? Hold on. Oh, he's not even here. He went over to the video store to return some videos. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He, he'll be back soon. He's just gonna. He's just returning his videos. I, I can make a note for him to call you back when when he gets back. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Okay, I'll do that then. All right. <laughs> well, let me know if uh, let me know if any. Like I said, let me know when the next report comes in that someone's using my call sign. Um, well, it's not your call sign. There's it's multiple co- people on this. There's multiple people on the same call sign. For one, that doesn't make any sense because those are official calls and we're we're legally bound to them yeah but we um, thought we were just going to spread them out and may- maybe you know they wouldn't hear each other we didn't think anyone would even know but i forgot right, we- nice day. okay well bob dobelina away <laughs> he didn't have anything to say to that i guess what's with these people not using their radios that much I thought they're supposed to be ham radio people I wonder if ham radio people are just bored with ham radios because, you know, the internet. Hello? Hi, uh, is this Barry? Yes. Hey, Barry, uh, this is Bob Dabalina. I'm the manager over here at the Taco Bell. Uh Uh-huh. And, um, hey, uh, your ham radio transmissions, they keep coming through our drive-thru speaker whenever you sign off with your ham radio call sign. And uh, I don't know, like, are you using too much power, maybe? Uh, when did this last happen? Uh, just, just, uh, yesterday, I think it was. What was the call sign? Uh, the call sign's KF. Yeah, that's not me. That's not you? No, I wasn't on the radio yesterday. I haven't been on the radio since last Sunday. Well, that's your call sign, right? Yeah, it is my call sign. Oh, because I I don't know, whoever's, 
like you're, you're letting other people use your call sign i didn't think that was allowed i mean i'm not like a ham radio I, guy but what i'm telling you is i'm not using radio nor am i giving anybody permission to use my call sign oh well i don't think Whoever's anyone else would just that. use your call sign can't you just admit that you're doing it and, and please stop because uh, you know we're trying to do orders and it's it's just you babbling on about stupid tech stuff uh you got the wrong guy I don't even have a power transmitter that would transmit down there. I, I got a hand talkie. Oh, one of those hand own, talkies. I don't even own a desk radio, and I'm in don't, I don't, don't you, think that's working out the way. Don't you call it a handy talkie? Yeah, I, I, a hand, yeah that's what I said, a hand talkie. Well, no, you said hand talkie. It's, uh, I, I always thought it was called a handy talkie. That's the manly way to say it. <laughs> But anyway, you know, like, uh, it, it's just kind of annoying because we're trying to do uh, do our work here, do our job, and people people keep getting interrupted by you, and they're, they're saying, like, their their testicles are heating up, like like it's too much power coming out of the thing. They're getting radiated. I don't, I don't know what you're doing, but if you could just cut it out, that'd be nice. All righty, I'll do that. Oh, so now you admit that you're doing it, and you'll stop. <laughs> I, I see, because it seems like a minute ago you're pretending you didn't do it. Yeah, well, if, if it's happening, it, I, I guess a miracle, it must be me. Is it really a miracle for for you to just get on your ham radio and cause problems for everyone? It's a miracle that my ham radio is causing problems for everyone because it hasn't been turned on. Well, you said it was on on Sunday, and you just said you were going to quit doing it. Yeah, so. I, I, it was on on Sunday to check into the net and off again. Well. I don't like. Are, are you just like? Are you a competitor or something? Or are you just trying to fuck with our business? Uh, like, well, personally, I I prefer that you didn't uh, talk to me that way. Well, I'd prefer that you uh, not blast your call sign to all all of our customers. They don't give a shit yeah. about your call sign. They're, they're just yeah. they just want to they just want a damn taco. <laughs> okay. You know, we we keep having to turn off our drive through and just send an employee out there to stand out there like a, like a moron, taking orders on, on a piece of paper like they work in a restaurant. It's well, stupid. Sometimes you are what you are, and it's all your fault. Mm-hmm. And what do you mean we are what we are? It's your fault. You're the you're the one that's causing all these problems. And you're the moron that doesn't believe me when I tell you it's not me. Well, who else and, would and use you're your the call sign? In the parking lot. Well, you're the moron that's not tracking down whoever's using your call sign. Why don't you get out there and track this guy down? Care less. You could care less if someone's using your call what, sign. What am I going to do? I don't know. Do I, do I, do I look like the FAA or the the FAA? Yeah. Or <laughs> anyway, DIA listen. Or I think FBI. I've been. Hey, shut up! I think I've been wanting to get into ham radios, so I'm going to get a ham radio, and I'm just going to start using. Okay, he hung up. I'm pretty sure he just gave me permission to use his call sign, though. That was another idea by uh, you know the the anonymous submitter of these numbers also known as bob murphy looks like he also wants me to get real angry with them about um their microwave beams i'm not sure how that would figure into ham radio use but i'm sure we can think of something oh look at this it's a female ham radio user you don't see that too often or i mean i don't think you do i've listened to ham radio frequencies before it's just a bunch of oh hello Rhonda. yes hey Rhonda. uh this is this is Bob Dabalina from the Comptroller's office here in... Mm-hmm. And I'm just calling to let you know that we're going to be uh, beaming microwaves at your house uh, this this uh, for the next week or so. And uh, we, we, show, we, show okay. he- we show here on our records that you're a ham radio user. Yeah. So uh, could you not use your ham radio for the next week? Because we're going to be beaming microwaves. And, you know, the signals would, would interfere with each other and cause just major problems. Just don't use your ham radio, please. Not from your home, at least, because we're beaming microwaves just, at your roof. I, I just want to know what you're cooking me. Oh, no, no, we're not cooking. It's just a, mic- a microwave <laughs> antenna. I was, hoping for, I was hoping for pizza or something, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's where you usually yeah. microwave things. Um, yeah, we just have the handheld ones right now anyway, so we don't even have an antenna up and working right now. Okay, well, even the handheld ones. Uh, don't, right, don't, right. Make sure you don't use those for the next week, because we're going to be beaming high-powered microwaves straight at your house okay. from the air, like on your roof. 
okay. the, to be honest, I don't think um, your ham radio would work anyway. Also, you're going to have problems with Wi-Fi. Do you use a lot of Wi-Fi in your house? Um, yeah, that's yeah. We have that's our internet. Period. Oh, yeah, yeah. You might want to yeah. just plug in a wire and, or, or something because your Wi-Fi is not uh-huh. going to work too well. It's going to be blanketed in microwave. So what about beams. cell phones? Uh, I don't know. Just, just could could you just like go somewhere else for a week? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, what? Okay, so you're Bob. Yes, sir. Yes, the ma'am. Comptroller. Yep, the comptroller's office. I'm in the Womp the Bamboo actual, Department. I'm sorry, what? The actual like county department or something? Yeah, it's called the Womp Bamboo Department. In, in the comptroller's office? Okay, this is a stupid question, but this is not a prank call, right? Oh, no, of course not, ma'am. No, it's just, I, I'm just, I, they, they wanted me to call up. Call, call you up and just let you know not to, to use your ham radio. Just just for the next week. Just until, like, they're going to start this weekend. So, like, all this weekend and all next week. And they're going to stop on Friday. They're going to stop beaming microwaves at your house on Friday. So, Friday the 21st? Yep. Yep. So, just, uh, you know, just... But if, if you use your ham radio, it's going to deflect all the microwave beams. And they're going to go back into space. And that that's just bad for the environment. You, you could put a hole in the ozone or something. So just, just please don't use your handy walkies. Is that what they're called? They're handy talkies. Radio, yeah, radio. Handy yeah, talk. yeah. Don't. I, and why are we doing this microwave thing? Is this going to affect me? Uh no, or no, it shouldn't talking. affect you at all. Do you have any fish though? No. Thank God. Okay. Yeah. Everything should be fine then. And what address do you have for us? Uh, it's the one on. Lane. Okay. All right. Just um, checking. Hey, uh, listen, this is going to sound weird, but, um, you know, for the next week until next uh, Friday, um, your, your, the water inside your to- toilet bowl, it's going to be kind of warm. If you reach in there and feel it, you'll notice it's warm. But okay. Just don't worry I, about this, this is just getting really weird. Yeah, well, it's microwave beams, you know? But it just feels like a funny phone call. What? Come on. I, I mean, you know, you, you want to talk about things that are funny. You're, you're like a female ham radio operator. I mean, well, what? Do you, do you have it sitting in your kitchen? <laughs> did you, did you oh, like... What's your phone number if I need to call you? Did, did you like accidentally hook up your ham radio to your food processor instead of a computer? <laughs> You're just like, oops. I'm just a woman. Silly me. Gotta go watch my soaps. Oh, boy. Anyway, my phone number here at the Womp Bamboo Department is area code. I mean, it's on your caller ID, uh, the 4206969. Okay. Yep, yep. Just ask for Bob Dabalina in the Womp Bamboo Department. At- Making sure you knew what your number was. Oh, yeah. Yep. I, I know what my number is. I've had it for a long time. It's a custom number. I, right. I requested it when I got my job here. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rhonda. All right. Appreciate it. Have a nice day. You too. Bye. Bob Dabalina. Away! Oh, she didn't hear it. Everybody hangs up too fast. So I guess that was more of a, you know, we're beaming microwaves at your house than a ham radio call. But whatever, that was fun. I like that a ham radio operator doesn't know what microwaves are. And she's going to be telling everyone in her house about the microwave beams. I forget, did I even give her a reason? She asked for a reason, I don't think I actually gave her one though. Anyway, that was the last number on the list that would pick up. But I still have, I don't know, looks like seven or eight of them here left that haven't picked up yet. So I'm going to try those later. Maybe I'll throw him on a hobo soda or something. What's up, Brad? Um, Hello. Yeah, I took a break to listen to your shows for a while, but I'm back. I'm catching up. Yay. I'm getting there. Woohoo. Um, so happy. I was listening to an episode that you were talking about uh, if there's any stores called a hobo. Um, in Illinois, there's like a kind of like a hardware store, like a giant box store called Hobo. I've heard H-O-B-O, of it. H-O-B-O, giant yellow letters. Um, I you prank can, called their customers. Google it, just put Hobo Illinois. 
And uh, there yeah, was, there was a guy that worked uh, at a hobo store, and I think he got fired from there eventually. But he kept giving me phone numbers of the customers there. There is a hobo store. Kind of fun. If you want to check that out, maybe you could do something fun with that. Okay. That's it. Sounds like you need to catch up on the shows from like two or three years ago, whereas pranking hobo customers. Do you, what do you think of uh, those soundboard prank calls, like with Chris the Hacker and those like stupid little Chris the Hacker YouTube channels? Also, get the. Uh, Get the TNI working, you know. Mm. Stop being lazy. You guys aren't going to be happy you about this. Get your computer back. Just stop being lazy. Get it working. Oh, yeah, and answer my question. Cactus. Okay, all right. I'm not a huge fan of soundboard prank calls. They can be funny. I guess, like, if the person you're calling reacts to them, it could be funny. I should do an entire show of soundboard prank calls sometime, just for the hell of it. Just see what happens. It could be fun. Maybe I'll do that. And about the TNI thing... I've been doing some rearranging up here in the situation room, and I moved some shelves around, and I took all of the answering machine equipment and threw it in a box. So the T&I machine, it's just kind of on hold indefinitely. I really do want to set them up again someday, and I want to do it on this new T&I machine. I don't want to use the old one. Although I might get on the old one and, I don't know, just, just get the backups or whatever from what I already had done on the Asterix machine, the old one. The answer machines, they will be back eventually. I'm probably going to set them up downstairs or something on a different circuit, I think, because this the circuit that's up here, it's a little bit overloaded. And I had, I don't know, like eight power strips hooked up to all those machines. It was crazy. So, yeah, I'm going to set it up again someday. But for now, the TNI machine is just gone. It sucks. I miss it. I miss all the Asterix stuff I had in my house. I really need to get all that stuff working again. Like my payphone in the living room, it hasn't worked since the raid. I need to hook that up again. Why have I not done that at least? Hey, Brad, it's Dom the Bomb and Strange Life. Yo, yo. Hey. We got two things to tell you. This is weird. One. One. Is that why your voicemail is two minutes long? Because you have two people on the line? One is that they, we have a confirmation that there are robotic employees taking over. We robotic have a confirmation. Employees. Breaking news. Breaking the news June, are there. On the June 7th episode of Party Time, it, uh, Matt let me be on it with him, Carlito, and Zach, where they called some... some illegal working store yep. and they made an employee malfunction i have some recording of him malfunctioning nice june 7th that was like a month ago i don't even know don't if i heard it, this but he just wouldn't stop saying no cigarette no cigarette please don't no tell cigarette. Again. Uh, no cigarette. Ah, that's normal oh wow he's playing it no cigarette my friend no cigarette you bring an ashtray please no cigarette my friend why you are calling me bring an ashtray it's like a nervous tick. No cigarette, no cigarette. Why are you calling me again? No cigarette, no cigarette. Why are you calling me again? He's stuck in a loop. <laughs> they made him malfunction. That's proof. Proof of robotic employees. Yep, they're taking over. Second, faster I than sent you think. You music, and I want my coin, please. I sent you three tracks uh, from the email. Beginning in F as in fuck, O as in possum. Oh come on. Oh. L as in loser. Oh. Yeah, just just I don't know. Did you did you email me? Is that what you're saying? F O L R E D is the beginning of the email. Just just email Thank me and tell came. me. So check it. I sent you three different tracks. I was gonna rap on them, but the instrumentals were too dope to rap on. So yeah. I thought you could just have them as background music. Check that. Oh, um, I want my coin and a big fat fucking shout out to my homie Strange Life. Investigate robotic employees. They are real. Okay, bye, Brad. Bye. Bye, bye. bye. See ya. That's awesome if you sent songs in. I'll definitely look at my email and try to find those. Hey, this is Nostro. And I've been watching your show for a while, and this is my first time leaving a voicemail. Yay. Well, uh, you should do more Sensei Doug calls. Okay. And, uh, you know, put a pastor in front of it, so your pastor Sensei Doug. (laughs) Okay. Has a a better ring to it. All right, thanks. See ya, Brad. Pastor Sensei Doug. I'm going to have to remember that. Hey, Roy, your shows have been great lately. I really like the, the landlord ones where you had about three people in a row that just lost their freaking minds. It's <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm listening to the lawn care one right now, and I have an idea. When you're saying to the people that you um, are, that you spray their lawn by surprise and you want to see how it goes, you should call them and say like that... You have the spray that strips all the chemicals off that they from their current lawn company because you read a report that says that that their chemicals are all bad and they're bad for the environment. So basically, what your what your stuff does is it just strips off those 
fertilizers and, and uh, lawn and weed killers and stuff, <laughs> and it just makes their lawn natural because that's better, and I bet you'll piss a lot of people off that way. So, that's anyway, a great idea. I like that idea. I could tell them we're with an environmental company, and we just go around taking the chemicals off of lawns, and then maybe demand a thank you from them. Hey, Brad. It's Ryan from Kentucky. Hello. Uh, I got two things. Number one. Why not just I one was thing? listening to the June 3rd show, the Art Style Auction Show, mm-hmm. and I heard you got your stuff back. Yep. Yay! I guess. Second thing I wanted to tell you was, I put lines through my seven and i'm not a weirdo i'm offended really that was one of your things that i got my stuff back you had to call and leave a voicemail to let me know i got my stuff back you would say that people who put a line through their seven are weirdo yeah i yeah. am highly offended they are but i'm still gonna listen to your show though so. oh, thanks thanks you fucking freak i just freak. wanted to let you know that it really upset put me lines through your sevens i fuck's wrong with you i refuse to think that People who put, who don't put slime through their seven are weird as hell yeah. compared to people who do, like me. We're super cool, so I don't know what you're talking about. I guess. Okay, bye. Bye. For real, though, I don't think that people who put lines through their sevens are freaks. I mean, sometimes I put lines through my zeros. Who the hell does that? Not often, but if I need to be able to tell the difference between a zero and an O, I put a line through it, like I'm a computer programmer from the 80s or something. So basically, it's okay for me to make fun of people who put lines through their sevens, because I put lines through my zeros. It's just like if you're not white, you're allowed to be racist. It's the exact same thing. Hey, Brad, it's Nico. I was just calling because I'm I'm noticing um, in your shows that a lot of people pronounce roof rough yes i have noticed that too especially the old people that i call they keep saying rough i I think mildred monday said rough didn't she i'm thinking it might be funny if next time you're talking to a roof guy or or, or whatever a prank call guy about a roof and he says the rough be like no no i'm not talking about your roof i'm talking about your roof i'm not talking about your dog sir this is the the thing on top of your house or i could do the opposite i could say hey this is Roy from Roy Co. Ruffing. I'm calling about a problem with your ruff. Kind of like belittle him a little bit. Might be funny. Yep. Anyways, that's my thoughts for today. Hope you're having a great day. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye, Nico. I hope I can remember to do that next time I do ruffs. Brad, I was listening to the show picking my nose, and then all of a sudden you played the Bob Murphy soundboard effect, yep. and I spit boogers all over my finger and cut my nose with my fingernail and got a nosebleed. So wow. I'll be, you'll be getting a letter in the mail from my lawyers. Word up. Ah. I'm not going to become a Patreon member, and I use ad blocks on your videos. Thanks. Damn it. I guess I deserve it, though. I mean, you know, totally worth it. I made some guy, like, you know, cut his nose with his fingernail. Sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy. Wow, okay. I'm going to read the uh, Google translation thing for that one where he says, Sunshine on my shoulders. Okay, it says, John, it's Joe. Hey, girl, I'm or strollers. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. <laughs> but I've got that I think I'll be able to help you. Don't know I'm going out now. That That's what all that translated to. Now you know. Hey, Brad, um, not going to give you my name this time because it's real talk time. Right. Um, I just wanted to say that um, your shows have really been kind of hitting the spot lately. Um, Aw, thanks. I've you know, been- other people have been saying the exact opposite thing. Saying I'm losing my edge, I'm not funny anymore. Remember back in 2014 when I had an awesome it was show. I cancer for quite a while, and my last uh, scraping was pretty large, and it's freaking me out. That's a bummer. Recently man. diagnosed with um, inattentive ADD, basically ADHD, without the hyperactivity. Oh, just like me. And then coupled with the whole anxiety and depression thing that um, everybody our age seems to have. Um, it's, why, it's, why don't you just be happy instead of being depressed? Just be happy. Been Duh. Kind of a tough time. So, Brad, um, I just really be happy. thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Why don't for, you just be um, happy? Everything you I'm do. I'm sorry. I know that's an asshole thing so, to say. For all the, um, for all the, you know, love that you show us, and I think it, it, it you know, I think our love is returned in a big way, and um, uh, oh. we love you, Brad. Um, thank you so much. Um, looking forward to all the shows coming up. Bye. Thanks. That that's like I don't know. That's just an awesome voicemail. That makes up for all the other voicemails that I usually play where people just yell at me and and insult me a bunch. 
I mean, not that I don't enjoy those also, but yeah, it is pretty cool that, you know, every once in a while, the snowplow show helps someone have a slightly less shitty day. That's kind of awesome. I still don't see why you couldn't just say your real name, though. Hey, Brad, this is your mom calling. Hey, mom. I just had one quick question for you. Uh, Could you tell us the story of the origin of Steve Dave? Okay. Because I think we'd all love to hear it. I stole it from Kevin Smith. That's the story. If you search for Steve Dave on whatever podcast thing you use on your phone, there's a podcast out there. I think it's called You Tell Him, Steve Dave. And I never understood the Steve Dave thing. I remember them mentioning Steve Dave and Mallrats. That's an old Kevin Smith movie, for those who don't know. And then I watched the the Clerks cartoon, and they had a Steve Dave character in there that was hilarious. So, I don't know, I just, I watched the cartoon, I thought it was funny, so I started using the name. But I know nothing about Steve Dave in the Kevin Smith universe, and I've never listened to the podcast about Steve Dave. Maybe I should so I can steal some more material from him. Hey, Brad, it's Crimson. Hello. Uh, yeah, you probably, you haven't heard from me for a lot, for a quite a while, because... A while ago, uh, Ahmed Omadi called in, and he had me and Olga hostage. I still haven't heard from Olga on the voicemails. I don't know what happened to her. Yeah, nobody does. I escaped Syria. Olga hangs out in the the Discord. If, if anyone wants to say hello to Olga, go find the PLA Discord channel. It's in the show notes. Ahmed Omadi and our, our plea for help. We had a subliminal message in the voicemail. So you could save us. But the second you heard something about... The Trump travel ban, you shut it down. And in the very next episode, yeah. you, 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 like, like, I get distracted easily. Half of your jokes, you, you like, threw Trump into the middle of the, your jokes. So you're like, oh, Trump, oh my god. If you see Trump in a voice, I'm just going to shut it down. But then you do like half your show. Sorry. Trump jokes. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, Brad, be consistent at least. Okay. And thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for not saving me from Syria. You know, I should have called Trump. <laughs> should have. But whatever, it's my show. I can do what I want. Maybe on the next show, I'll just talk about Trump for an hour instead of doing prank calls. Because I can. Hey, Brad, it's Publicist. Hello. Just wanted to say thanks for calling in and uh, freaking some people out in my area. Uh-oh, what did I do? Especially the lady with the fireworks. Oh, so. yeah, you submitted numbers to me. Anyways, Thanks. I'm getting excited, I'm sure as with uh, many other people, for Dean Timber. Yep, yep, it's uh, canceled this year, by the way. A few ideas. Sorry. Maybe for the first one, we can have people put notes on there, you know, with saying that their car came with GPS tracking, and that's how the Dean got there. You know, maybe do some kind of creative spin. Or they could put something like that they were testing their automotive skills and loosened all the lug nuts to see how fast they could do it. But they didn't think they got them on very tight, so they better check them before they drive off. Yeah. You know, sign it, Roy, and put your phone number. Yeah, Anyways, great idea. that's all I have for now. That's not going to get the police later. called. Bye. Okay, last voicemail. Hey, Roy, the retard boy. Uh, just wanted to leave you my first hey, ever voicemail hey, so you can take cool. your voicemail virginity. Um, just wanted to let you know that at work I listen to your podcast every day, and it's really great. It keeps me laughing. Sometimes I laugh and these customers look at me all crazy because I got my earbuds in. But I uh, just want to say keep it up. Keep making some funny pranks. Also, uh, I work at a liquor store and I noticed that we literally have a liquor called Cactus Juice. Holy it's shit. It's by Decky Yupper or whatever. I don't mm-hmm. even know. D-E-K-U-Y-U-P-P-E-R or some weird ass stuff like that. I think it was on party time the other day. They uh, What did they do? They called up uh, a 7-Eleven or something. They were calling up 7-Elevens on 7-Eleven day and giving them shit about Slurpees or something. And they had cactus flavored Slurpees there. Which sounds really gross, but they have them apparently. Literally, Decky Upper Cactus Juice. I'm not even kidding. It's some kind of stupid liqueur. But anyways, uh, take it easy, retard boy, and uh, so long! Oh, what the hell? <laughs> I turned up the echo, and, and he didn't say fuck boy. He totally pranked me, or maybe he just hung up too soon when he was leaving the message. That's probably what it is. Anyway, that is the end of today's show. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the show today, and I guess thanks, Curaz. For supporting the show. I should just keep calling him Kuraz. That's that's what I know him by. I've known him by Kuraz for years. Who does he think he is? So thank you, Kuraz, for sponsoring the show today. And everyone out there should be supporting the show on patreon.com slash phone losers. And you should be telling your friends about the show and, and just forcing everyone to listen to it. Bug the shit out of your friends and family. Drive them crazy, begging them to listen to the show. It'll be funny. It'll be like a prank, you know? Today we're ending the show with a song by everyone's favorite Snowplow Show artist. This is Ruprecht the Monkey Boy with a song called Come Monday. I don't know what this is a parody of. I don't know the original song, but I kind of like this for some reason. I don't know why. Hey. 
Headed up to Roy, New Mexico. 